Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scooter Buyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W47C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition, and this is the seventh in a sequence of videos in which I talk about item elevator design. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the options for the regulator of an item elevator and what the pros and cons of those different options are. Uh, so a, a quick recap, uh, the regulator uh, is uh, represented by the yellow blocks uh, over here in our item elevator template, uh, and uh, its responsibility is to ensure that items do not proceed to the tower at an inappropriate time for the barricade block and the levitator block. Uh, the uh, regulator doesn't actually need to be in this position, um, but it will prob probably be within a few blocks of the barrier block. Uh, okay, so um, there are actually two categories of regulators. Uh, there are obstructions and breaks. Uh, and obstructions are further subcategorized into traps and stoppers. A trap uh, is uh, uh, simply lowers a block of the base of the water stream so that items are going to get stuck in the trap. Uh, just like that. Um, the, the block can be pulled down from below, uh, or it can be pushed uh, down from above uh, with the help of a slime block. Um, uh, but the, um, uh, the block of the trap must be flowing water, so uh, it, it must be below flowing water, uh, so that items are gonna, will continue after the block is pushed back into place. Uh, if this was just a, a bare ice and the, uh, and the block was pushed back up, there would be nothing to, uh, uh, to allow the items to continue down the stream. Uh, now, uh, the, besides the fact that um, uh, there's going to be some requirement for additional space underneath the base of the water channel, uh, the main disadvantage of traps uh, is that they cause too high water, uh, and uh, as a consequence, they shouldn't be used if the water of the water channel is between layers 48 and 61 inclusively. Uh, otherwise, squid can actually spawn in the trap when the trap is down. Uh, and even though squid uh, won't affect items in the stream because there's no collision uh, between mobs and item entities, uh, the squid can trigger redstone components that are intended to detect items, uh, which can then throw off the timings. Uh, Alright, so uh, on the other hand though, um, the main advantage of traps is that they work really well at regulating the stream, uh, resulting in really well-defined batches of items that uh, move, on to, uh, move on to the tower. Uh, okay, so um, a, a piston-based stopper, uh, like this one here, uh, is actually the inverse of a trap. Uh, it's going to raise a block of the base of the water stream uh, uh, up so that uh, it creates an obstruction for incoming items. Um, now, uh, a big disadvantage of piston-based stoppers is that they have an unpredictable, uh, unpredictable effect on the velocity of items above the block that's being pushed by the piston. So if there are items uh, that are flowing above this block when it gets moved up, um, they, uh, they tend to be thrown around a little bit. Uh, and this can result in items that get stuck on nearby blocks of bare ice. And for that reason, I no longer use or recommend uh, piston-based stoppers, but um, include them here just for completeness. Uh, okay, uh, so doors and trap doors uh, can also be used as stoppers, uh, providing that the obstructing edge of the door um, is, uh, is actually against the upstream side of a block uh, of uh, uh, the upstream side of a block of water. So um, here we need to make sure that the, the door is going to close uh, flush with, uh, with this edge. Uh, now, uh, the big disadvantage of door-based stoppers is that they can close uh, on items <laughs> actually that are passing within the new collision box. Uh, so if we open this door here and imagine an item coming down the stream, and if the item is right here when the door closes, uh, what's going to happen is the item is going to start to rise up through the door uh, before the game realizes that, oh, there's not solid blocks all over the place, and so it's going to get spit out either side here. Uh, and uh, uh, this can result in items that actually get stuck on the block with the door because this block uh, can't have uh, water on it. So items are, are eventually are going to get stuck here. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, I, I no longer use or recommend uh, door-based stoppers either. 
Uh, as for brakes, uh, brakes are also further subcategorized into wet brakes and dry brakes. Um, wet brakes introduce a countervailing water flow, uh, which can stop or even force items back upstream against the regular current. Um, a dispenser with a water bucket can be used for this. Um, uh, the um, uh, the, dis uh, the advantage of using a dispenser is that it places a water source block. Uh, so the, the, uh, water, uh, the water source block uh, that gets placed right here uh, will have no current uh, and, um, uh, and uh, that's because it will be flowing evenly on both sides. Um, you probably wouldn't want a, uh, another source block of water right next to the dispenser. Uh, and as a consequence, the, uh, the water that gets uh, uh, placed in front of the dispenser will, will, won't have any current. Uh, and if you combine that with a non-slippery block in front of the front of the dispenser, uh, that uh, that is very effective at stopping items that are coming down the stream. Uh, now, uh, since the dispenser itself is a non-slippery block, you can simply embed that in the base of the uh, water channel, uh, and it will have the same effect. Um, uh, um, so, and either of these configurations is fine. Um, now, the, um, the disadvantage of using a dispenser, though, is that it needs to be double pulsed. Uh, you're going to have to provide one pulse uh, to place the water and one pulse to retract it. And, and that makes the timings uh, of, uh, of the mechanisms more difficult, and it can significantly complicate the circuitry. Uh, okay, so uh, another wet break is a water source or uh, another flow of water that is held back by an extended piston. Uh, when the piston is retracted, the countervailing water flow is released into the water channel. Um, and uh, with respect to the necessary circuitry, this is much simpler than using a dispenser because the piston doesn't have to be double pulsed. Uh, however, the countervailing water flow can't extend by the same amount uh, because it has to be uh, back uh, two blocks uh, from where a dispenser would place it. Uh, and uh, uh, in unless, of course, the uh, flow of water is released from above, but then you end up having the same potential piston problem as you do with traps. Uh, but this is, this is actually relatively effective as well, uh, and uh, we'll see an example of this uh, in the last video. Uh, okay, so um, a, a dry break uh, doesn't actually use a solid obstruction uh, or, um, uh, or a countervailing water flow, but instead it uses other block mechanics to slow or stop items. Uh, so this right here is a piston-based dry break, uh, and what would happen is it would replace a block of flowing water uh, with uh, another block that's not going to collide with items in the stream. So uh, things like uh, top half slabs uh, or uh, trap doors, um, even things like uh, fence posts, if the items are aligned correctly in the stream and aren't going to collide with the fence post, uh, those, those will all work. Uh, the, um, uh, there, there is some risk uh, for items kind of spitting out the side with this, um, uh, and uh, I haven't completely figured out how to mitigate that, uh, but that is one potential disadvantage of this. Uh, besides that, um, these particular uh, uh, style of brakes um, are pretty good at creating, um, uh, uh, breaking up the water stream in such a way that there are no items in long stretches, but they're not so good at actually bunching items in the same way that, uh, that traps are. Uh, okay, so uh, another uh, dry break uh, is the novel suggestion here to, to drop items through a cobweb. Uh, and this was uh, suggested to me um, by, uh, <laughs> um, let me see if I can get this correct. Uh, the last time I tried to pronounce his name, I really butchered it. Yendrik <laughs> um, Weiss. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure that my pronunciation of German this time was laughable, so I preemptive, preemptively apologize again. Uh, but uh, this is the only non-mechanical regulator. I, I really like this one. Um, as items come down the stream, um, they're going to get uh, stuck in the cobweb, uh, and they will stack with other items that are already in the cobweb to uh, the maximum number of a stack uh, until the stack uh, drops into the lower water stream and continues. Uh, unfortunately, this regulator is limited to item streams with a low to moderate volume of a single type of stackable item. Um, uh, uh, and it does uh, require that you drop your item, uh, your water stream down a block, which usually isn't too, too big of a deal. 
Uh, but um, this, uh, um, the use case for this, uh, where you have a low to moderate uh, uh, volume uh, item stream with just a single kind of stackable item, is actually true for a number of different kind of farms. You know, slime farms um, uh, come to mind as, as the obvious one. Uh, even things like sugarcane farms, if you stagger the harvest of uh, the sugar canes. Uh, so this is uh, this is really usable. It's nice because, uh, as I mentioned, it is the only other. Uh, it is the only non-mechanical solution here. Uh, let's see. Uh, the, the other thing that I, uh, that I want to mention, uh, I guess, with respect to wet breaks here um, that I didn't say before is um, wet, uh, wet breaks are, are kind of hard to get the timing right. Uh, it, it's a little bit difficult to predict how the counter, countervailing water flow is actually going to affect items in the stream until you do a lot of experimentation with a particular setup. Uh, so you will have to work at it a little bit, um, whereas the other ones are, are pretty straightforward. Um, these ones are going to require some additional experimentation when you're actually putting an item elevator together. Uh, the same can probably be said about dry breaks, uh, although, as I mentioned, dry breaks, uh, for me at least, uh, ha really have a risk of kind of spinning items out the side, so I, I tend not to use them. Uh, okay, uh, that's all then for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the options for the activator. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments, and thanks for watching.